Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, this is going to be a little bit different of a video because it's a week later. I obviously have not made <laughs> much progress on my, my, my test knit that I showed you in the last video. Uh, so I thought we could do just like a quick little video on maybe some of my knitting books. I don't have too many. I'm sorry my hair is like looking like this. I tried curling my bangs last night with foam rollers and it went about as as good as you could expect but it doesn't look too too bad I guess. Um, it's passable. I went to work like this so um, they'll settle down eventually right? Uh, <laughs> so I thought um, you know we're gonna do just a quick like what kind of books do I have in my crafting stash. I'm gonna do crafting in general because I don't tend to have a lot of books related to knitting or crochet specifically. I have a lot of just like crafting in general books. I like to keep them around for like reference and stuff. I bought a bunch of them when I was like I just want some more like knitting books. Some more just like general kind of crafting ones. I have a couple that I don't know where I put them so I know I at least have another sewing book that I have lost. I don't know how to sew, but I have three of them. So I guess we'll start, the section I have the most of is knitting. So we'll start there with our knitting books. Um, I'm gonna show you my oldest, not like oldest to me. This one is, I think, one of my newest acquisitions, but it is old. So I love it. I bought it on eBay. <laughs> I went on this kick on eBay where I just, I had, I had to buy a bunch of like vintage crafting books. Um, so this is the Pris Priscilla sweater book. Um, I think it's adorable. I want to make one of these sweaters, honestly. Um, <laughs> I really do. So this book was published. Let me find the date for you really fast. Um, 1917. So it is over, it's over a hundred years old, <laughs> but it's still, it's in such good condition. I just, I keep it in this little plastic. It came in this bag. So I keep it in the bag. <laughs> just want to, just want to make sure it's safe. It comes with like a little lesson in knitting. It shows you, look at that. Look at that. It's so, it's so cute. I just, I love it. Um, but here I'll show you show you some of the sweaters, some of the things that come in it. Just like look at these. Um, but this is my my oldest book. Um, I do want to get some more of these. I just need to find a way to store them so they're not just like on my bookshelf. This is the back. Um, it's just a cute little it's a cute little ad. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know what the hold is on these, but I love them. Um, yeah, I also have a bunch of other vintage ones on like a DVD that I bought on eBay as well. Um, that's I bought those on eBay. It's like a book. It has a bunch of sewing and knitting and crochet and tatting books on just like a it's PDFs of them. Uh, I think there's a couple of embroidery as well. I just picked up like a general crafting one um, because I think, you know, historical knitting patterns are kind of fun. I just, I'm scared of them a little. <laughs> they scare me. So I don't do too many of them, obviously. Uh, but yeah, that's one of, that's one of my favorites. Um, so that's, I think I might have a tatting one. I, I don't want to like move it around too much because they're both like over a hundred years old and I want to keep them kind of like safe and you know, take care of them so that maybe somebody else later down the road can can read them but for my other knitting books they're not as old <laughs> some of them are kind of old mainly because I really like the look of vintage patterns I think they're kind of fun also I'll just go for the most outrageous thing possible um just like as a person I like I like to have knitting books that have patterns I probably will never make but I like the look of them so one of them I have is um, 
knitting vintage socks new twists on classic patterns from nancy bush i've heard good things um i've heard good things about this book and the patterns in this book i have yet to make any of them um i kind of forgot i owned this book actually i bought it on thrift books um the cool thing i like about this one <laughs> i don't know if you can see it it's um it's spiral Oop. somebody's somebody's math is in here so i'm gonna keep that um but it's a spiral bound so it lays flat and i just honest to god i think that was the main selling point for me was the fact that it's spiral bound um i don't know what it is with craft books and their like need to not be spiral bound but if they only made craft books spiral bound i think i'd be more inclined to own more of them honestly um because like i don't know this one this next one's kind of old so it's kind of broken in but like why does it why does it do that i want to spy i want it to lay flat so that i can look at the pattern and like keep track of it and stuff but no um so the one i just kind of showed you was sue bradley's um cotton collection uh it's just 26 easy to knit designs they're just kind of just kind of gaudy honestly i think that's my main reason that i love them um <laughs> this book was published I think it was the 80s? Yeah, 1988. So there's it's a bunch of like vintage 80s knit sweaters. Like, look at this one. <laughs> Some of them are color work. I haven't actually made any. I keep meaning to. I just get a little nervous and I don't. But maybe I'll make one of these later i keep saying that. i'm gonna say that for all of them i'm gonna make one of these patterns but <laughs> this is another one in my collection um i bought this one on etsy yeah this was an etsy purchase i just looked up vintage knitting books on etsy ebay has a lot more of the like kind of older ones they're also occasionally kind of cheaper than etsy but i do like looking on etsy for their their patterns and sometimes you can find ones that people have already uh, translated to modern knitting or crochet kind of lingo and they've like updated it all and they let you they give you all the tips on how to do certain things because some of the patterns you know how like writing styles change well pattern writings change as they get older and stuff so that's one of the things um another one that i have is this one isn't necessarily patterns it's more of like a reference it's called sweater design in plain english um I just thought it would be kind of fun to read um as i got older like i've been knitting longer i want to make more complicated things so i wanted to make some sweaters i wanted to try designing one um obviously i'm not anywhere near that but i bought this book just in case so that i could pick it up i think i got this one i bought most of my books secondhand um there's only a couple that i bought that i paid you know amazon prices or like went to my local bookstore um to get this one was not one of them <laughs> um so yeah this one i bought on thrift books i just like i think i had a coupon and i said i kind of want this so i'm gonna buy it i have no need for it right now but whatever so that one's kind of exciting um it has just a bunch of different um things you need to think about when writing sweater patterns obviously um this one I bought um, mainly because the title intrigued me, and now as an American, I, I kind of know what the Mason-Dixon line is. I'm not from that area, but I have uh, Mason-Dixon Knitting. It's, I don't entirely know why I bought it. That's an interesting title. Um, it does have patterns in it. I haven't made any. I've kind of started reading it. It's a little bit of like them giving personal stories, but then also there are knitting patterns in here um but it's got it's got interesting kind of patterns like this rug sorry there's this guy um i don't know i i kind of bought it on thrift books just like it was recommended i thought why not check it out and if i don't like it i'll just get rid of it um yeah it's just so far so good i just thought it was intriguing it was made it was printed in 2006 so if that gives you any sort of context you know that's 
where it came from. Um, so far, so good. They had a blog, MasonDixonKnitting.com. I don't know if that actually is still up, but that's probably where they got the name from. Um, the other one I picked up on thrift books that I have like looked through but haven't really like you know dug into was um, Knitting in America. So I went through a phase a while ago, a couple months, where I wanted to get um, wanted to try some like different styles of knitting. I knit you know a lot of the same things over and over again so I picked up this one it has patterns profiles and stories like this oh you can't really see that um, it just seems kind of like a fun way to get more into it there's a cardigan pattern I just found just random turn to a page um, there's socks and jackets and all sorts of fun little things just some just some interesting kind of like designs um I haven't really I bought them they sit on my shelf I just kind of like occasionally look at them and I say yeah I should open that back up again and I don't so this is another one that just sits on my shelf I bought it on thrift books it was kind of cheap I think that's why I bought it I don't know um so the last one I have for you is my only knitting book I have bought new. Uh, it is the first one I bought. So I'm, I'm very proud of this one. Um, it's called The Knitter's Activity Book by um, Sincerely Louise. I follow her on Instagram. Um, the first time, the, this isn't the first book of hers. I checked out one from the library and it was uh, her taxidermy knit one. <laughs> and I tried making um, so if you've ever seen what she does is she makes just small little projects. It was something like this, but it was a moose head. And I thought it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So obviously I had to make one. Um, did not turn. I don't like it. It's not finished, but I don't like it. So I don't know, but I really liked that book. I had picked it out at the library. So I thought I'd get a different one of hers. Um, but she just has look at this little lobster isn't that adorable i just i don't know what it is i just like looking at the pot. i don't make this kind of content for myself like honestly i don't know what i'd do if i just like knit a bunch of lobsters what would i do with them i don't know but they're cute i like looking at it um i think there's a corgi and like raccoons and stuff in here she's got a little polar bear <laughs> And there's uh, little activities you can do, all sorts of stuff. There's chickens, you can like knit, she's got patterns to knit a chicken. I don't know, I just love watching her her work show up on my Instagram feed and it's always kind of fun. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my knitting books. That's all I have in the knit world. I do have a couple other books that are different crafts, different craft related. Um, like I said, I have some sewing books. Um, one of them I have is Bernadette Banner's Make, Sew, and Mend. Um, I don't know how to sew, but I bought it because I thought it was kind of fun. I, I've been watching her content for a while. I, I get in waves where I, I watch a lot of it and then I don't, but um, generally I think it's kind of fun. I don't know. I like the idea of teaching myself how to sew. I just haven't done it yet. Um, and this one's a good resource if I want to, you know, do some hand stitching so that's kind of why I bought it I also just was like well maybe then I'll actually teach myself <laughs> the other one I have is first time sewing the absolute beginner's guide uh, this one is not so bad it's got eight projects it's for the absolute beginner I have kind of read it cover to cover I like read some of it look through most of it have yet to actually make anything out of it so Maybe if I do, that'll be a video, but this is another one I have. Just kind of sits there next to all my little gardening books and my, <laughs> my I want to be, you know, who knows what. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my sewing books. Um, another thing I have is tatting books. So um, if you don't know what tatting is, it's a, it's a lace making design. This one I bought new at my local bookstore. It is spiral bound, which is kind of fun. And it has just, it 
it's how to make little collages out of your tatting pieces. Um, but it has how to make each one individually and then kind of how she connects them together, which I thought was honestly really fun. Here's like a tassel in. Um, I haven't, I haven't made any, haven't made, I don't know how to do it. I bought the supplies and I like watched a couple of videos. I just got kind of nervous. Also, I think I bought the wrong kind of tatting supply, the wrong tatting shuttles off of Amazon um, because we don't have anywhere in town, I think that sells them. Um, so this will be like a later when I have a couple days off and I have like a load of free time and I'm not freaking out. Um, the other one I bought was another thrift books find, but it was a new twist on tatting, which just has more tatting uh, patterns. Just some, some hat lace and doll lace, just more ways to make lace. I don't need lace. I have enough little things popping up everywhere. So maybe I'll make it, maybe I won't. Maybe it'll sit there forever and confuse people. Um, the last crafting book that I have has done, it's not, I mean, it's, it's a craft. It's not like a fiber arts in the traditional, I think, sense. Um, it is a cross stitch book, uh, that I, for one, was very excited to find. It's America, it's, it's National Park themed cross stitch. Oh, I love this idea. Have I made any of them? No, but I'm very slow so I need to like work up I need to work through them myself um I'll show you my favorite um it's the Yellowstone National Park one if I can find it oh my goodness Okay. Well, I don't know why I can't, but here's like Glacier National Bay. It just picks like one thing. The Yellowstone one that I really love is uh, Old Faithful, obviously. One of the more well-known examples of what Yellowstone is. I believe there's a couple other versions as well. I could be wrong. Here's the uh, the Great Smoky Mountains. Um, but what I really like about it is it, because not only does it give you the chart and the color that you'll need, um, it also gives you some sort of uh, facts and figures. So for example, you know, uh, there's approximate, like a rough population of 1,500 black bears in, what is this? In the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Uh, it gives you a little bit more info about the park. Um, as a kid who grew up going to Yellowstone kind of frequently, um, this is honestly kind of fun. I really like this idea. Also, it just kind of like highlights different areas in the country that I thought was really, really neat, really fun, really interesting. Eventually, I'll make one of these. <laughs> Eventually, I'll have a whole bunch of them. Uh, <laughs> but I picked this one I was more into. Oh, here it is. It's the very back. Here's the Yellowstone one. Um, fun fact about Yellowstone believe it's 3% of this national park is in the state of Idaho, which you may see that's so tiny, but that's the only national park in Idaho's borders. So we're really proud of that. 96% <laughs> of it is in Wyoming. So <laughs> it's really exciting for us or something. Uh, the rest of it is in Montana. <laughs> um, but that's, it's just something, just something kind of fun. Yeah, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Yellowstone National Park. Uh, but yeah, that's my last one. I don't have that many crafting books. I have a lot more other books, but those are for a different different kind of channel here. We talk about crafting. Um, so I guess if you guys want to see any of them in a little bit more detail, we could do a video on that. I just haven't gotten around to like, you know, reading a lot of them, but we could we could test out a couple patterns in them. I think the, the Sue Bradley one, the sweaters from the 80s is one of my one of my top on my, like really high on my list um probably underneath my priscilla one um so yeah i hope you guys liked it um 
What's your favorite kind of crafting book? Do you have crafting books? Do you keep physical books around or do you prefer to go to like the library for those? Um, do you prefer them like an ebook version or like physical? What's your, what's your preferred method? Um, <laughs> if you guys want to answer any questions, I would love to talk to you guys about books because I love them. <laughs> but anyways, I will see you guys in the next video and have a good weekend.